Mr. King, are you living in a la la land? Like, uh, uh, do you have, do you find yourself fantasizing a, a lot? I, no. So we received information from the person that you listed as a sponsor. And he says that he told you time and time again that he was not going to sponsor you. So why are you saying that that's your support in the community? He's tired of you doing this. You go to prison, you come out, you do the same thing. You're in prison, you're still doing the same thing. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in prison, sir? No, I don't. So why can't you control yourself? Good morning, I have uh, Keen here. We are about to watch probably one of the creepiest parolees that we have ever seen in the state of Connecticut. Now, of course, we have seen a lot, but there is something particularly extraordinarily creepy, scary, dangerous about this um, abomination that continues to get locked up because he seems to have an obsession with pleasuring himself in public in front of little ones. Yet the system, for some reason, continues to release him time and time and time again. The year 1998 was his first conviction for exposing himself in front of little ones. He then served prison until 2001. His next conviction came in November 29th of 2010, where he did the same thing in a public area. Again, after getting released, after just a short amount of time, he was caught again in 2020. A woman was driving past an elementary school when he saw himself sitting in the playground again doing the insane. But that wasn't the last time because the system released him yet again, where he was caught with bottles of lube in front of little ones doing, I suppose, his favorite pastime. And wouldn't you know that he was out on bond for doing the same thing just a month prior. Now we know that monsters exist. We know that there are dangerous folks that should not be out in the public. We know that those who commit crimes over and over and over again, what can you expect? But how is it that the system, the system put in place to protect us, the community, the most vulnerable, how is it that the system will allow him to be released after yet another short sentence? His maximum date to get released is, listen to this, is April 12, 2026. So regardless of what happens today, he's going to be out in the streets, in the playgrounds, in the schoolyards. Why? Let's just ask the DA that question. Let's ask the judge that question. But for now, let's listen to his parole hearing. Good uh, that means at, at, at your order, at your order, at your request. Mr. King, can you hear me? Yes. And, uh, can you hear perfect fine right now, or do you, uh, do you need the officer to um, raise the volume over there? I, I can hear you fine. 
Okay, perfect. So thank you very much for your patience. We're going to proceed. Um, okay, um, board members. Yes, thank you. Yes. Good morning. My name is Pearl Officer Vasquez. Today is the 1st of August 2024. This is a hearing of the Connecticut Board of Pardons and Paroles. The following board members are present this morning and by stating their names on the record to certify that they have reviewed all statutorily required documents and available for information and preparation of this hearing. Good, good morning. I'm panel member Page. Good morning, George Chance. Good morning, panel member Rodriguez. Thank you, board members. Um, this of uh, service, please state your name and inmate number for the record. Uh, Francis Scott Keene, 165970. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Keene. Um, and so this hearing is being conducted in consideration of the parole application for Mr. Francis S. Keene, um, inmate number 165970, who is serving a total effective sentence of four years. Uh, this is concurrent, followed by four years special parole. And this for the charges of risk of injury to child and a violation of probation, underlying charges being breach of the second degree, loitering in or about school, and public indecency. As of today, registers like the parole eligibility date of April 11, 2024. This was at 50 percent eligibility. Um, there is no victim input in this case. There is an offender accountability plan for this offender, which has been reviewed and shows that the offender has not successfully participated in any of the recommended OAP programming. He remains under the Department of Correctional Weaknesses for 5% of the job assignment, vocationally to be assessed by USD 1, voids and sex treatment program. And this is according to the RT3 query I read for um, this inmate's um, school. Utilizing the statewide collaborative offender risk evaluation system, the offender's overall score on the SRT falls within the moderate range of risk for recidivism. Um, and utilizing the static 99R, the offender's overall score for sexual offense recidivism falls within the low range. All right, Mr. Keene, um, this is your opportunity to express to the board why you believe you should be granted parole. You may begin. Officer uh, Vasquez, we ha I have a static score is uh, six and high. High, that's what I have, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, that's my bad. It is high. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Keene. Tell us why you think you deserve parole. Before he starts, can I run and go get my other classes? Sure. Here. Okay, okay, Mr. King, we thank you for your patience, sir. Um, would you like to explain to us why you think you deserve a role? Um, well, uh, um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 uh, um, I, I believe that I, um, Mr. Mr. King, would you prefer that we ask you questions, sir? Because it seemed like uh, you don't really know where to start. We do have questions in preparation for your hearing today. Oh, okay. Do you want yeah. us to ask the questions or would you like to make a statement, sir? Well, yeah, you can ask some questions, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Each of us will take a turn asking the questions and then we'll deliberate and give you our decision. OK. Right. Thank you, Ms. Chance. Yes. Yeah, so hello, Mr. King. So. You seem to have been struggling now for quite a while, and so I would like to ask you, what is it that you think that you need to do to prevent you from committing these offenses? Uh, well, I have, I have a good support system uh, in place. Do you uh, use that support system? And, and you, yeah, yeah, it's good, good support system. Uh, I, I have a friend uh, that I uh, always get in contact with and I talk with him quite a bit. And what kind of support is he going to give you? Um, well, any, any, uh, anytime I um, uh, Um, uh, did, did, did I need, need him to uh, um, 
um, and support me in, in a way that I can um, uh, that, I, that, that I don't reoffend. So, um, you previously um, participated in the sex offender treatment program. Were you able to gain any insights into that? Uh, yes. Yeah. So what did it tell you that you need to do to prevent you from committing these offenses? Uh, uh, stay in contact with my um, uh, support support person, Tom. What else? Um, uh, uh, stay uh, busy. What does that mean? Well, to, to uh, uh, pay, pay attention to uh, uh, the work that I need to do. And, and what's the work? You, you're on social security. So what do you do with your time? Um, well, um, uh, what about, um, well, getting into the, um, uh, walking dog business. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Again, getting into the uh, walking dog business. And why would that be appropriate for you? Because, um, let's face it, Mr. King, well, if you get in the, the, the walking dog business and you're walking about the neighborhood, what is that doing for you? Um, you know, helping the elderly, the people that um, can't really get out to walk their dogs. Um, I mean, well, I'm help. going to tell you, Mr. Keen, I don't feel that that's the appropriate thing for you to do because part of the issue that you have is, you know, being around, uh, you know, young children and walking your dog in a neighborhood. You could run into that. So do you really think that that's appropriate for you to do? I could I could find something else to do. Yeah, I could do I could find something else to do. Where um where are you going to stay when it's time for you to go back in the community? Um I'm, uh, probably in a reach, reach house. Weren't you there before? Uh, 
Uh, yes, I was. Okay, how did you do there? I, I, I did pretty good. Um, I followed all the rules and everything. I did, I did pretty good. I followed all the rules and everything. And um, what about treatment? Um, I, what else? Um, outside uh, counseling. So, Mr. King, there are some issues here. So, you were in the um, sex offender treatment program during your this current incarceration, but you were removed. Are they ever going to be able to put you back in the program? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because the way I see it, um, Mr. King, you, you haven't done so well on your past two community releases. You were in the treatment program and you see the disciplinary report, and so you had to be removed. For me, I think you need to um, know what your risk factors are, and you don't seem to be able to identify those. So I think you need to go back in the programs and be able to identify those and say what your um, response is going to be and how you're going to um, practice those perspectives. Yeah, we, we did a, we did go over risk factors, yes. Okay. So you know that you need to work some more on those, right? I'm always continuing to work on them all the time. Can you name one? Uh, uh, um. Mm -hmm. well, uh, that'd be a uh, walking t too close to to a uh, school. And how? What what do you do? Uh, I avoid it by going a different route. Okay. What else? Um. What about your own personal behavior? Oh, um, your DR for the um, the sexual misconduct. I don't need to know the details of it, but I just need to know. You know what you did there, 
correct? Uh, 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 where now? Do you know what you did in order to get that disciplinary report? Um, okay, so where we are, Mr. Keene, is that I think that you need to go back and um, try to get back in the sex offender treatment program where you are and then complete it. Okay. Um, so I'm all well, set for that. Yeah, I've, I've, I've done that before. Yeah, I, I've, I've done that um, quite often. Okay, so you know what you have to do. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you're going to go back and complete, try to get back in the program, and then you're going to identify your risk factors there, and then you're going to talk about and practice, um, you know, what steps you have to do with those risk factors that you've identified. Okay? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I usually do. Take okay. steps with those risk, risk factors. Yes, I do do that. Okay. All right. So thank you for um, talking with me. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Ms. Chance. Mr. Keene, are you living in a, a la la land? Like, uh, uh, do you have, do you find yourself fantasizing a, a lot? Uh, no. So we received information from the person that you listed as a sponsor. And he says that he told you time and time again that he was not going to sponsor you. So why are you saying that that's your support in the community? He's tired of you doing this. You go to prison, you come out, you do the same thing. You're in prison, you're still doing the same thing. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in prison, sir? No, I don't. So why can't you control yourself? I mean, you've been in the treatment. You've been doing this kind of thing since 2002. Well, actually, that's the eight, 1988 is how far back it goes. The same behaviors, same convictions. You've taken the treatment. You've been you, they, at least five times. You've been in the January Center. They've tried to help you time and time again, but you continue to behave in this manner. There's nothing we can do for you, sir. There's absolutely nothing we can do. And I feel like you are at, you're in the right place. You're somewhere where you won't create any more victims. The staff in there are, you know, equipped to handle your uh, inappropriate sexual behaviors. And I, I just, I can't imagine releasing you out to the, to the community and you still, you just got a ticket for what you were convicted for, as my colleague said, in March of this year. It's just, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It's insanity. Absolute insanity. And I know you know what you're doing. You, you're 70 years old. You know what you're doing. So for me, I, I don't believe you're an appropriate candidate. You rate out very high. I will not support your request today for discretionary parole. I do not want you to come back before me. Um, my vote will be to deny you with no new hearing. Mr. Dodger, yes. Thank you. Give us a few minutes to talk about your case, sir. Ms. Chance. So, um, Mr. King has had repetitive uh, sex and behavior since 1982. He completed the sex offender treatment program several times at least by colleagues. And he still continues with his sexual uh, deviant behavior. Um, in addition, he 
has been out on two previous community releases and failed because he returned with no uh, sexual behavior charges. Uh, he was given four years with six years special parole. Uh, he was already in the uh, sex offender program where he is, but received the misconduct so removed. So for me today, I have been denied and I, I don't have him coming back. We're just going to set his special parole. That's it. So Thank that's you. Where I am. Thank you, Ms. Chance. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm in the same place. It's criminal history, yep. uh, misconduct, recent misconduct. Of course, they're basically the same behavior. Yep. Um, poor institutional adjustment based yep. on those tickets that he got, and ina inadequate for me, inadequate of evidence of offender change. That's exactly what I have. Full conditions. I have um, right. mental health. Uh, yeah, I have certain same for the conditions. I have mental health evaluation and treatment, halfway house, um, enhanced monitoring. Restriction on pornography, no minors, and problem sexual behavior treatment in the community. Anything else? All right. So, with regard to Francis King 165970, I move that his request for discretionary parole be denied based on his criminal history, his poor institutional adjustment, the disciplinary infractions that he's received, and inadequate evidence of offender changes. So, repeat is the repetitive nature of his offenses and even displayed in the in uh his disciplinary infractions. I further move to set the following special parole conditions as Mr. King has six years of special parole to follow his sentence. He is to have no contact with minors. He will participate in mental health evaluation and receive treatment as being necessary. He will participate in the problem sexual behavior treatment in the community. He has um he will be monitored by the enhanced monitoring while out in the community. He has a restriction on pornography and he'll be released to a halfway house. A residential placement. I didn't say no contact with the victims. I need to say that because we do have victims. Yeah. Um, yes, DS. And, yes, and, uh, DS. And the parents. Yes, of me. yes. And um, so, in no contact with the victims. Um, initials D S D. I'm sorry, D S D S N A S. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All right, Mr. King, you'll receive all of this in writing, sir. We couldn't roll you to parole today, and I'm sure you know why. We've explained it, um, and you'll you'll get it in writing, so you'll see why. Okay, good luck to you, sir. This concludes this parole hearing for Francis S. King, debate number one six five nine seven zero. You're all set, sir. Will you ask the officer to please send in uh, Mr. Nabrowski? Thank you. <laughs> well, this is the mugshot of our Prince from 2020, and he has several that goes on through the years. <laughs> we heard the parole hearing. He's doing it even while locked up in prison. Now, I got it first. I'll take my hat. I'll take my hat off to the parole board. Because this is everything I wanted to see. God bless you, man. They came through. It's you know, it's it's it's. I guess it was coming. This, this is this is what draws them over the edge. This is what they were the parole board. They don't get lost in uh, I don't know in the Kool Aid. Didn't we all need this? We needed to hear that there's something in there that they got some zest, that they got some common sense. Oh, it was great. Oh, man. What a scary thing. You know, it was, uh, it, it was just to. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Let's read through this. I mean, I think I'm laughing just because of how messed up it is. How messed up it is that you will have a system that won't find it within them to make sure this thing never gets out in the streets. This is just something really bad waiting to happen, even worse than it is now. But you're, he, you don't need to hear it from me. We all know, we all know the insanity of it. 
Let me read this to you. He was 66 years old at that time, a registered sex offender. This is 2020. So he's, um, and let's see, he, let's pull it up here. Police card came with a second degree breach of peace, public indecency. He was taken to local hospital for an evaluation because that's, yeah, you would say, come on. I mean, that you can't be normal, right? Keen registered offender, has a history of public indecency on June 19th. The uh, police charged him with public indecency, second degree breach of peace, risk of injury to a child after they say he was doing that in the gazebo. These charges are still pending in Superior Court, according to the judicial records. In 2010, he was convicted of risk of injury to a child after approaching boys in public area and doing that. Yep. In 98, he was convicted of risk of injury to a child. When he was caught with his hands down his pants in front of a 14 and 15 year old and those are just some of his charges that's not all of it i'll go to another one here where he was uh this is this i'll go to one that happened a month after that incident so this is a month after that incident because he's on bond because why not give him bond right and Deputy Police Chief Colin McCaster said a woman who was driving past Salem School with a child in the car told police he saw Ken exposing and found himself at, near the playscape at the elementary school. When officers arrived, he said they spotted him with his pants unbuckled on a bench on the green, which is across the street from the school. King tried to walk away when he saw the officers. Officers found Keen with a bottle of baby oil. I mean, just an innocent bottle of baby oil. I'm sure his attorney, you know, just explained to the judge how what's wrong with an, having an innocent bottle of baby oil on you. Police charged Keen with public indecency, second degree breach of peace, loitering in or about a school. Police held Keen on $25,000 bond, which was doubled when he appeared in Waterbury Superior Court. Thank you, judge, for doubling it. At least you can do that. Um, and this is the third time, third time in the past five months that the police charged him, a registered sex offender with public indecency, Connecticut, three times in five months that he's caught. Can you explain to us why, why, why? No, you can't. I mean, we don't understand. That's what they would say. You, you don't understand, you see, you don't understand. We're the shepherds and you're the sheep. You just listen to us. Here you go. You don't understand. We have the PhDs, right? We're the politicians. We have the whole, you know, we, we have it under control. Just go about your day, okay? Okay, we'll listen to you. You're right. On June 19th, police arrested Keen after they say he was doing this. This is a... I guess he likes gazebos. I don't know if it's the same crime. On August 21st, officers charged him after policy. They found him with his pants. Da, 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 undone, sitting on a rock. Why not? That's a nice place to sit. Police said that he had several bottles of lubricant in his position, possession. <laughs> because one bottle's not enough, you know. <laughs> Can you even imagine several bottles? What, what? Why do you need several bottles? These cases are still pending in Superior Court. Um, he's a registered though with the public in 1998. Okay. And there you go. I mean, it, it's escalated three cases in five months that he's caught. You don't get caught each time. And the system with all of this, with all this knowledge and in their, in their brilliant wisdom, they sentenced him to a maximum of four years in prison. Even with his write-ups of continuing to do this in prison, they are going to release him. He will get out on April 12th of 2026. That is in what, a year, and I'm not good at math, but less than two years. And hmm, I wonder at what point they'll say enough is enough. And uh, the one good, another good takeaway is thank 
God, he doesn't have a low risk score. When they first announced low risk score, you should have seen my face. My jaw dropped. I mean, I, I wasn't surprised because we we see that. But at the same time, having read what he had done, I was like, oh, great, another low risk score. But, okay, he's considered a high risk. That's good. That, this is what gets you to the high risk. Anyways, thank you, Richard, for making sure that I saw this hearing. We cover so many. And, I mean, we're I'm talking about, I don't know, maybe – I have to look at the numbers, but the spreadsheets that Richards has probably over a thousand a month that we're looking at. So we try to bring you the most um, important ones. And if you want to continue to support the channel, you can do that by subscribing and helping me reach a hundred thousand subscribers. That's the goal. And with that, I'll let you go. And you still, you just got a ticket for what you were convicted for, as my colleague said in March of this year. It's just, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It's insanity. Absolute insanity. And I know you know what you're doing. You, you're 70 years old. You know what you're doing. So for me, I, I don't believe you're an appropriate candidate. You rate out very high. I will not support your request today for discretionary parole. I do not want you to come back before me. Um, my vote will be to deny you with no new hearing.